Hello again. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion of Voronoi diagrams by talking about how to actually construct those Voronoi diagrams. So let's get started. We're going to start with the simplest case, which is where you have only two sites in your graph. And that means you need to create only two cells containing those sites. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an edge between those two sites such that um, every point that lies on that edge is going to be equidistant from each of those two sites. So how do we do that? That's actually called a perpendicular bisector. And you may have learned about that in geometry, but just in case uh, you have forgotten or you didn't learn about it, here's how we're going to draw it. We're going to find the midpoint between A and B. And to find the midpoint, uh, you need to average the two x's that you were given, the two x-coordinates, and that will be your new x-coordinate. And then you will average the two y-coordinates that you were given, and that will be your new y-coordinate. Once we have that point, we are going to then find the slope between the two sites that we were given. And we are going to use that slope to find a perpendicular slope to the slope that's between A and B. We're going to use that perpendicular slope and the midpoint that we found to write the equation of a line, and that line is going to be our edge, and it's going to be the perpendicular bisector. All right, so let's look at this example. I found the average of the two x's, negative 3 and 5, and I got an x-coordinate of 1. Then I found the average of the y-coordinate of 3 and the y-coordinate of 1, and I got a y-coordinate of 2. So my midpoint is at 1 and 2. The slope between the two points is negative 1 fourth. So to find the perpendicular slope to that, I'm going to do two things to the slope between the two points. Um, I'm going to take that fraction and I'm going to flip it upside down, find the reciprocal of it, and I'm also going to change the sign of it. So if the slope between the two sites is negative 1 over 4, then the perpendicular slope is going to be positive 4 over 1 and that's represented by that dotted pink line there. I'm now going to replace that with an edge, and that edge has equation y minus 2 equals 4 times, in parentheses, x minus 1. So now I've created a Voronoi diagram with two cells. Everything in the left cell is going to be closer to site A, and everything in the right cell is going to be closer to site B. So now let's increase the complexity of the problem by using three sites instead of just two. So what we're going to do is we are going to find perpendicular bisectors between each pair of sites, but I'm going to use dotted lines at first because I'm going to have to erase part of each perpendicular bisector, and you'll see the reason why as we proceed through this problem. So we're going to work two sites at a time. If I'm just looking at uh, sites A and B, the midpoint between those is going to have coordinates negative 6 and 2. The slope between those two points um, is going to be undefined because it is vertical uh, between those two points, so the perpendicular slope is going to be 0. That means that the equation of the edge, the perpendicular bisector between A and B, is going to be y minus 2 equals 0 times parentheses x plus 6. Now looking at sites B and C, the midpoint there is negative 2 and 1. The slope between those two points is 1, so the perpendicular slope is going to be negative 1. So the equation of the line that has that slope and goes through that point is going to be y minus 1 equals negative 1 times x plus 2. Now looking at the final pair, site A and site C, the midpoint there is going to be negative 2 and 6. The slope between the two sites is negative 1 fourth, so the perpendicular slope is going to be positive 4. And I draw another blue dotted line there for that perpendicular bisector, and it has equation y minus 6 equals 4 times parentheses x plus 2. So what you'll notice is those three blue dotted lines meet at a vertex, but as they keep going, the dotted line becomes closer to a third site than it is to either of the other two sites that I was working with in the beginning. So I need to erase the part of each edge that is closer to a third site than it is to the two sites in its name. 
So when I was finding the perpendicular bisector for A and B, that's what I called it, PB, and then in parentheses, A comma B. That's the perpendicular bisector between site A and B. But as you go to the right of that vertex, you'll find that every point on that perpendicular bisector is now closer to site C. So what I need to do is I need to erase the right-hand parts of that perpendicular bisector so that I'm only using the points that are um, equidistant from A and B and they are not closer to any other site. So I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the perpendicular bisector to B and C. I'm going to erase the top part of that because all of the points on that part of the perpendicular bisector were closer to site A and I don't want that. I just want the points that are closer to B and C and not closer to any other site. And then finally, working on the perpendicular bisector between A and C, I'm going to erase the bottom half of that because those points were closer to site B um, and not closer to sites A and C. So once I've erased all parts of the perpendicular bisector that I didn't want, I now have a complete Voronoi diagram. So all points in that top left cell are going to be closer to site A than they are to any of the other two sites. Um, in the bottom left, all of the points in that cell are going to be closer to site B. And um, on the, that big area on the right, all of those points are going to be closer to site C than they are to sites A and B. So that is how you create a Voronoi diagram. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.